Hello, my name is Dylan, and in this part of the tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create uh, the lens flare shader in Blender uh, with real time preview. In uh, the previous video, we looked at some of the features of the real time shader, and in this part of the tutorial, we'll be looking at quickly how to put one of these shaders together. Now, just as a quick overview, when we look at the scene setup, we can see it's quite simple. We have a camera we have what we call the lens flare plane uh, here's our image which in this case is just a or our 3d scene in this case is just the image of an earth uh, that i can turn on and off and we have a uh, and we have an empty that we can use to position the actual location of the lens flare in real time before we render out and again if we hit render here we can see the uh, the image is rendering out First, the 3D scene, which in this case is just a picture of an Earth on a plane, and then the actual lens flare itself. And then uh, there's an optional composite that can be uh, produced. We can see it going on here that is used to mask out the lens flare if needed. That's optional. And then finally, uh, the composited scene as it comes together now. So in this tutorial, it'll be split into uh, four sections. First is adding the lens flare plane and adding the lens flare shader material to it. The, the second part is adding the drivers that are used to give the empty position to the shader. Here's the light position of the shader. And you can see as we move this empty around in real time, the positions, the X, Y, and Z positions of that, uh, of that empty are fed into the shader to let it know where it has to render the the start of the lens flare, so that's the next part of the uh, the next section of the tutorial in this uh, quick section, and the last part is we'll be adding some render layers in. Again, these are optional, but they sped up the rendering times considerably. So let's move into it. We'll try and get it through uh, reasonably quickly. So we're going to uh, start with a new Blender scene, and before we get going, we just have to take care of a couple of things. Uh, the first part is that we must actually have the lens flare shader. Uh, if we look here, we can see its name is lens flare, in this case version 1.1 OSL. So you need to download this and uh, a download link or two will be at the bottom of this video. And save this OSL file in the same folder as your actual Blender file. The next thing is we start up a new Blender scene. So let's just save this and we'll call it uh, Tutorial 2. And so let us save that. Now the next step is uh, very important. It's, of course, it's deleting the cube. So let's do that. We uh, click the cube and delete it. Right click it and hit X. Uh, for people who are newer to Blender, I'll just undo that last step. You can see the keys that I'm pressing on the side here. So I'm right clicking and then I am uh, hitting X, which you can see here. X and delete. Now. Before we get going, this is super important. Uh, from the uh, from the camera icon tab here, with all the render settings, we must click Open Shader Language. Now, it's very easy to forget that if you're doing a lot of open shader language work. Uh, it's always clicked, and you forget that it isn't clicked by default. So make sure Open Shader Language is set. Now, also, uh, what are we going to do here? So the very first step is let's parent the plane, what we're going to call the lens flare plane, to the camera. So I'm going to select the camera, and first I'm just going to uh, put it in the origin. So I'm going to go Shift-C to shift the cursor to the orange, Shift-S to go uh, cursor to the center, and then uh, Shift-S again for the selection to cursor. And then I'm going to go Alt. If we look at it on the uh, side view here, numpad 3, going to go Alt R to rotate the camera down, Alt G just make sure it's in the middle again. And then the last step is I want to rotate the camera, uh, I want to rotate it so it's pointing this way. So I'm going to go R X 90. There we go. So that's the first part done. The next part is if we uh, hit numpad 1 to look straight along, or if I hit 5 just to put us in perspective mode, I want to add our lens flare plane. So Shift A and Mesh Plane. 
Now I need to rotate the plane on the x-axis, so R X 90, and there is our plane. Let's just go into wireframe mode by pressing Z. Now let's set up a few more ports. Uh, we need to size the plane so it is pretty much the same size as our uh, camera port. If we're looking through the camera here, we want the plane roughly to be about the size. It doesn't have to be too accurate. So, but just to help us in this, let's split up the view into a few more ports here. And let's split this one down. Now this uh, pane here I'm going to use as the actual uh, the camera, camera view pane. I'm just going to put file save as well. So hitting the zero key uh, with the cursor up here lets us see through the camera and we can center that image with shift middle mouse and the middle scroll button to scroll the size up. Now I want to make this plane about the same size as this camera view. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit now uh, and so I can see it through here if we go to an overhead view so hit 7 up here hit grab and we want to move it in the y-axis so we're grabbing it this way now we can start to see that plane so let's position it about there and hit 0 here so we can see the uh, through the camera again and now scale in the uh, z-axis and there we are we've scaled the plane to be roughly just a little bit bigger than the camera view it doesn't really matter if it's if it is this big or if it is this big as, as long as it's not smaller than the camera is, is the key part and in terms of how far it's positioned away from the camera you can pretty much position it uh, anywhere you want just as long as it's uh, centered up and it's about the right size uh, if you're using depth of field in your scenes, it would probably pay to position the cam, uh, the, this this plane where the depth of field is. So let's la label the plane now: uh, lens, flare, plane. You can name it what you want, but it's just easier to understand. Now the next thing is we need to parent this plane to the camera. So uh, if it isn't selected already, right select the plane, and shift right select the uh, the camera and then it's control P and object keep transform parenting. So now we've parented the plane, lens sphere plane to the camera. We can click on camera here and we can see here's the lens sphere plane underneath it. And now if we rotate the camera, we can see that the, uh, the plane moves along with it. And if we grab the camera, we can see that the lens flare plane is sticking in front of it. That means that no matter where we move the camera, we will always be able to see the lens flare. Okay, the next step is now to add the lens flare shader to the actual lens flare plane. So to do that, uh, we select the lens flare plane, come along to the new material, and create a new material. Now let's come over to the node editor so that we can uh, add, uh, add a new node. Now we can see that it's created the default node, we, uh, which is a diffuse material. We want to get rid of that, so right click it, press X to delete it. And now we want to add in the actual um, the lens flare shader, which we do by going Shift A, coming down to Script, choosing Script, and we want to load up the external editor. So we click External, find the OSL file, which should be probably in the same directory as our blend file. We click it and accept it. And now uh, it's as simple as adding the shader in to. Uh, the surface material here. Now the next step to view the shader uh, is we just click over here and we click rendered and now this should render our shader and we can see uh, we can see the lens flare shader is working and we could go along and uh, change settings down here and start to play with the shader now. Now sometimes uh, I have noticed that it does crash blender and I'm not as, I'm not sure if it's the shader itself crashing, crashing blender or whether it's the uh, just the early uh, version of OSL that we have in Blender at the moment. It may be a mixture of two. Someone might be able to tell me if they can see some errors in the scripts. So before we continue, uh, we've got a few housekeeping things to do. Uh, let's make this a little bit darker by going along to the world view setting and just changing the color to, to dark so we can see uh, the shader a bit more clearly. The next thing that we'd like to add into the scene is um, 
is is something to look at. So if we move the cursor over here and let's add in uh, a monkey, let's add in Suzanne. So we can now see Suzanne uh, peering through the background of our lens shader of our lens flare shader. I'm also going to click lens flare plane here and just and lock the view, which is a new feature in two point six seven, which is a, which is a very useful feature. Now. The next step for us to do is to position, uh, be able to position the actual lens flare source. Now we can do that uh, manually by coming up to lens flare position and if we change these values here we'll notice that the position of the lens changes so we can change it manually if we want to. But it's much easier of course if we can just drag and empty around the scene and have the lens flare change position. So in this next step, we are going to add an, uh, an empty, and we're going to add some drivers to the empty to get the the empty's position vector into the light position. So to add this in, first of all, we must add the empty. So let's just left click here. We go add, and uh, we find the empty. So add empty plane axis. Here it is. And let's name this, shall we? We'll call it uh, light position empty. And we'll save our file. And I'll just scale that up a bit so we can see it a bit clearer. And let's see if we can drag it into the scene. Uh, to do that, let's click X ray so we can see it a bit more clearly. Display X ray. And let's actually just move this back down to interior. There we go. Okay, we can see the lens. Uh, we can see it quite clearly now. Okay, so the way that we're going to uh, get the position vector from our empty into the shader is the following way. If we create some input value nodes, so we're going to create three of them. So Shift A input value and if we uh, shift D select it shift D and then shift D again now we've got three of them and we can optionally label these uh, X and then Y and then Z uh, that's optional it doesn't affect anything but it just makes it uh, easier to see what these things are now the next step is we want to get these three elements from the position vector into the light position. So to do that we're going to use a combine, go to the conversion node, shift A, converter, combine RGB. And we can link all these values up and combine them into one vector. And even though these are different color types, uh, this is an image output and this is a light position, we can actually just connect those two together. And now the position of this empty uh, will be dictated by the actual values here. Ah, that's not true. <laughs> it's the position of the lens flare will be dictated by the positions of the values here. If we go into rendered view, uh, we can now see the lens flare has moved radically from where it used to be. Uh, and, and it's now being controlled by, by these values down here. I set that to 0.5 we might be just able to, to see part of it. Sometimes I move this off the rendered view while I'm changing these uh, just so we, we don't get a crash. Now the way that we get the position of the empty to be reflected in these empty well hand typed in value fields is by using drivers. It's very easy to add a driver you just right click in the field and choose add driver and it turns purple right click add driver right click add driver so now the trick is to get the driver connected up to this empty <coughs> now to do that uh, in this bottom view down here we are going to change to a graph editor mode so we click graph editor it might just do one other thing too let's label this lens flare plane let's change the materials name to lens flare matte material you don't have to do that, but it might just be easier to see things later. So we can click on this X value, and we want to choose drivers from this 
from the setting here and now we can see the lens flare material and we can also see uh, we can see the element that we have we've clicked on now let's click these off here as well just so we can see all of them now the next step up here in the uh, in the driver window is hit N to bring up the uh, properties panel and we just have to do a bit more housekeeping we need to for each of these drivers click on the X we need to scroll down and delete this uh, modifier down the bottom here just delete the modifier same on the Y scroll down uh, to the modifiers delete the modifier the Z delete the modifier now what we want to do is we want to link this empty position the X Y and Z we want to link them to these purple driver values so the next step to link is we click on X for example and then we want to change this expression to the word VAR variable it has to match this down here now the next step here is an object slash bone we want to choose excuse me we want to choose our light position empty so we choose light position empty if I just move this over a bit more so we can read read it and it's already mapped to uh, X location world space we can choose uh, what setting we want it's already on X so that's good and then we do the same here we click on Y change this to VAR VAR it matches that we choose light position empty and we choose Y location world space now we repeat the same for the Z value go up here press VAR uh, matches this variable here and then we choose the light position empty to get the information from and we want to get its Z location and now when we move this object uh, the light uh, when we move the empty we can see that these positions are now uh, being driven into the X Y Z values and this is a really handy way to get all sorts of information actually into shaders uh, perhaps in another tutorial almost uh, we, we can look at how to add almost any uh, any of the numerical animatable uh, parameters using this type of technique to get them from objects uh, in, into our shaders uh, for people who are writing the shaders uh, often the get attributes uh, has been talked about as something that doesn't work quite as we would like uh, but using these type of techniques you can drive all sort of, sorts of information into your shader so save it at this point now if I uh, change this back to the 3d view and look at the camera position and on this one here set it back to rendered it's now going to render out of the lens flare and as we move the actual lens flare empty round you can see now that it is uh, it's moving the position of the lens flare which is exactly what we want now there's only uh, one more step to do to well, we could use the lens flare at this point it's, it's quite usable uh, although there is one more step to do to increase um, to decrease the render times now to decrease the render times uh, we want to add some render layers in you notice that if we do a render on this it's taking quite a long time if you saw the previous video uh, you'd see that it, it rendered the image a lot more quickly than this and the reason that it's uh, taking so long to render is that the default settings of course if we look uh, at the samples are set to 10 for preview and, and 10 for render now you notice if I change preview to 1 then the quality of the preview has not changed I'll move the position of the of the lens flare empty of the position empty and you can see that the quality of the lens flare is is as good as if we had preview set to 100 so if I set preview to 100 uh, and move the position you can now see that it's uh, counting up oops let's get that the right size it's going through and uh, doing each render uh, but the the quality is not getting any better we can see one two three Suzanne itself of course is, is getting better with each sample but the lens flare itself is not changing and the reason for that is that the uh, it's an emission plane and it just needs one pass and it's at full quality
So the good news is we can set preview to one in terms of looking at the lens flare. And it's the same for the renderer. If we set the render to one, and let's do a render, you can see now it's a lot faster. Now in this case, we can see that the lens flare is at full production quality, but Suzanne is, uh, is not at full production quality because all your 3D elements will need just as many passes as they've always had. So to get around this, uh, we can put the lens flare on its own, own layer, own render layer. So that'll be the next step. Let's just save. So the next step to create a new render layer, we need to do a couple of things really. First of all, we want to ensure, we want to confirm that, uh, well, let's say this, this layer here is going to be our 3D layer. We want to move the lens flare itself to a different layer. So we'll select the lens flare uh, up here, press M, and let's move it to this layer here. So now the lens flare is on its own layer. And then I'll just remove, just put that onto wireframe. Now we want to create a new render layer in uh, Blender 2.67 that has its own tab. In previous view, in previous versions, it's actually been under the render settings, and you scroll down the bottom to find it. So we go to the render layer, and we want to add a new render layer in. And let's name this render layer Render Layer Lens Flare. You could name it what you want. And we put the lens flare plane onto this layer, uh, layer number five, I think it is. And so by selecting lens flare plane, we want to also have it only render this layer. Now for our 3D, uh, uh, for the 3D elements, we want to ra render all the applicable layers except this layer. So I go shift and turn off this layer. So the lens flare has its own layers. But now if we render at this point, just save it. You can see Suzanne is being rendered, and now the lens flare is being rendered. Uh, but you can see Suzanne is still quite poor quality. So let's up the default render samples to a more standard number. Let's say that's 20. If we preview at one. And if we come back to the render layers themselves, you'll see down here there's a sample setting. If it's zero, it just chooses the default samples, which in this case is 20. But on the render layer for the lens flare, we just want one sample. That's all it needs. So now, if we render out at this point, we can see that uh, Suzanne is rendering at the typical sp sort of speeds for my slow computer. And uh, and if it was your own 3D scene, then of course it would it would render just at the normal speed. And once it's finished rendering the normal 3D elements in your scene, then it will render the lens flare plane, uh, which it is now doing. And you can see that's relatively quick. And that has sped up the rendering considerably. Now, however, we have a render layer with our normal 3D elements. And we have the lens flare layer. So the final step in this part of the tutorial is to composite those two elements together. So I'll just save it at this point. Now to composite the two layers together, uh, we already have a, uh, we already have the, um, we already have the node view over this side, but we want to click on to the compositing layer. So we click this little icon down here, and now we're in the compositor. We want to use nodes, and if I hit the home key, we can see that it's just the standard setup. Uh, the render layer is just going straight into the composite output. So let's turn on backdrop so we can see a few things that are going on. Now we need to add in another render layer. So we go input render layer. There we go. And for this render layer, uh, we want to select the lens flare plane. And over here, we want to add those two. Uh, we want to add those two layers together. So we go to a color mix node. Drop that in. Add this node here. And we want to change that 
an add. So we'll save it at this point. Now let's render. So Suzanne has been rendered at the normal rate. I should change the uh, render numbers down just so this doesn't take so long. And in a moment, uh, the render layer will also, with the lens flare plane on it, will also be added to the top. There's rendering the render layer. And there's the composited version. So essentially, that's all we have to do uh, to start using our lens flare. If we just come back onto here again, uh, we can now edit uh, the parameters of the lens flare to our heart's content. If we click on here to the lens flare plane uh, again and change back to the node editor, we can now go and, and start changing all of these settings. For instance, uh, if I change the the image mix for the spots, if I mix a, a user-defined image in, let's change this value to 1, we will notice that these disk elements should turn into uh, hexagon elements. And you can see now we have a hexagon-based lens flare. Uh, if you saw the previous uh, part of the tutorial where it was talking about some of the features, you notice that we can define our own image textures. And uh, here are the actual image textures. You could uh, draw them up in Photoshop or GIMP or download them off the internet. And you can even use uh, any, any textures, of course, uh, that you want. So, for instance, if I change this uh, spot value here to the heart image texture, you can now see that we have hearts uh, rendered as part of our lens flare. So this has been a very rapid introduction of how to uh, to add the lens flare in. Just in in quick summary again, you add a plane, parent it to the camera, lens flare plane, parent it to the camera, add the lens flare uh, shader as the lens flare material, and then make sure that uh, material is on its own layer, some layer that's different from your 3D elements of the scene. Then add an empty and link that empty position to the X, Y, and Z input vector for the light shader position uh, by using drivers. Just right click in these elements to, to create the driver. And then, of course, uh, as we discussed, we go along to the uh, graph editor, choose drivers, hit the end panel, go down to the properties. The key thing is changing the expression to VAR so it matches this and then loading up the object to match the empty uh, that you created and then choosing uh, X for the X position, Y for the Y position and Z for the Z position and then the job is done. Uh, there will be another tutorial after this discussing how to add in masking. You'll notice uh, that when we look at this shader if we grab the uh, we grab the empty position. When I move the lens flare behind Suzanne, we would very much like it so that the lens flare just disappeared. Uh, we can see this effect uh, if we look out at this small video. If I scroll through this video, we can see which is a complex scene with lots of trees in it, we can see that as the sun passes behind the branches, the lens flare uh, attenuates in intensity. And it's possible to set up the, uh, the compositing nodes so that we get this effect automatically and don't have to uh, uh, key the intensity of the lens flare directly. We can, we can just have this, uh, these type of things work automatically in the scene. And we'll look at that in another video. Thank you.